Hey, ho, hey, ho, the devil are ya? Okay, so a few months ago, uh, I did a review on a Sony 4K Blu-ray player. And I was really impressed with it, really enjoyed using it. And I said at the time that uh, a 4K Blu-ray Blu player would have a, a good DAC in it compared to a, a, a CD player of around about the same price point. Uh, but someone mentioned in the comments a few weeks ago saying that this particular model of Sony Blu-ray player doesn't have a built-in DAC. It relies on the DAC in the ramp. And I was like, really? Looked it up and he was correct. So I was like, a little bit disappointed with that, really. Um, so it got me wondering whether, you know, a DAC in a CD player would sound better than my Blu-ray player playing CDs. So I had to get one. <laughs> you know, you know me, I'm very thrifty. Don't like to spend much money. I let others buy brand new and I buy it second hand a year down the line. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so what I got was this uh, CD player, mini disc player, Hitachi RMD100. Now it's a funny machine because there's a lot of these machines about with different names stuck on them. You've got quite a few going around. It's all the same machine. You've got the Goodman's Delta 901. Then you have the Universum MD190. I also found a Memorex MDX3800 and an Orion MDC201. So quite a few machines, and I'm sure there may be more out there. Uh, I, now, I wanted to know who actually manufactured this machine, because obviously all they're doing is just sticking their name on it. They get in the machine, pop their name on it, off it goes and they sell it, make a profit. Uh, so I just wondered, who the hell makes this machine? So I thought, I'll take the lid off it, I'll go in there and I'll find out. No, I couldn't. So I took the lid off, had a look in there, and it's a bit of a Frankenstein machine. Um, so when I looked around in there just a little bit, I found a JRC op amp. Uh, the laser uh, was made in China, and the semiconductor was made by Toshiba. So a lot of different parts all stuck in there all together. They've got some different parts to put it together. So I've no idea who actually put this machine together. I don't know, but everybody seems to have their name on it. Okay, uh, it's not a top end machine. Probably at the time it was around 2250. I, uh, there's no date stamps in there at all. So I'm not sure when this machine was manufactured. I reckon it's probably late 90s, early 2000s, around about there. But um, is it any good? Well, let's have a look at it. Okay, so here it is. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, it's not a bad looking machine, it's all right. Considering it's probably, you know, a lower end uh, machine, it looks okay. And the buttons are more functional than, than anything. I mean, they do feel maybe a, a tad plasticky, um, you know. But they, they, it does, it works fine. It works fine. Comes with a remote as well, everything else on there if you need it. Um, now, I didn't have any mini discs to go with the machine to do this video, but I remember my brother, years ago, he used to have a, a mini disc player in his car and he had a mini disc player in his hi-fi stack. So I gave him a call on the off chance if he still had any mini discs and lo and behold, he did. He said he doesn't use them anymore and uh, I'm welcome to them. So he gave me these mini discs. He was into his rock music and things like that. So he got a bit of Thin Lizzy, Led Zeppelin, Foo Fighters, Rush, Pink Floyd. Uh, so there you go. Um, so on the actual mini disc itself, there's a little tab here. And if that's pushed across there, you can't record on it. So I had to put the tab across, delete the, the disc, the information on the disc, so I can use it to record on for this purpose of this video. Now, mini disc, they say you can't tell the difference between this and a CD, and I can't. I can't tell the difference. It does use an audio compression called a track. Don't confuse it with eight track. It's a track, okay? <laughs> um, and some audio, you know, audio files didn't like the fact that it was compressed. But believe me, I can't tell the difference between uh, music recorded on that or the CD. I just can't. And, you know, if you recorded this to another one, then to that one to another one, that one to another one, then eventually you probably would tell the difference in the di in sound. You would lose some sound quality. But from a CD to one of these, you're, n you're not going to tell the difference. You just can't. Uh, 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 anyway. So, anyway. So let's try uh, recording a CD onto this. 
So I'm going to put, what I'm going to do is pop this to MD now. So a mini disc. I'll just lob this across. Arrow facing that way, and it goes here. Now, this, see, this is a little bit sticky. There you go. And it, that's when it feels just a tad little cheap. It doesn't go in really smooth. And then I'm going to put in, come up with blank disc. Then I'm going to put in a CD. Okay, changing over to CD now and press CD sync. And when I press play, it should start recording. There we are, it's recording now. So let it record for a few, but I'll have to talk over the music because obviously I don't want to get a copyright strike, but I'll just do 10 to 10 or 12 seconds of it uh, just so I can give you a demo. Okay, so that's done now, so I'll pause that. I'll stop it. Okay, put it back onto mini disc. And then let's play it and see it. There we are, it's recorded it. And believe me, there's no difference in sound between the two. I just can't tell any difference at all. So, you know, it's much better. I mean, this was, this was meant to replace um, the audio cassettes, uh, but obviously MP3 came along and destroyed that idea. Um, so there you go. Now, if I want to just stop that there. Now, if I want to wipe that disc, all I need to do is press edit here, then delete, and again, all delete, press enter. It's saying delete okay, just to give you another chance if you're making a mistake, then it's complete. Now that disc is completely empty now, blank disc. What I do like about this though, as well, is the fact that you can go through the tracks without pushing forward, you can just use this little wheel here. Now, I know there's a, a, a Sony uh, player that's got a similar wheel on it. So I don't know where there's been nicked from that, or this is actually a Sony part, I don't know. But I do like the fact that you can scroll through the tracks uh, using that little wheel. But you've got the remote there anyway, so you don't forget really that up and close to it. Hey, and there you go. Okay, and now to the question in hand. Which one? This one. Does it sound better than my 4K Blu-ray player? Yes, it does. So I find uh, I found that the 4K Blu-ray player could sound a little bit too digitally sometimes and a little bit harsh on the top ends. You know, you could go, ooh, I'll turn it down just a little bit. Uh, but with the, uh, the Hitachi, <laughs> it actually felt a lot, sm sounded a lot smoother and a lot easier, easier listening on the ears. Very detailed, very clear. Considering this is a, prop, this is a budget machine, I've got to say, it sounds very good. Could it benefit from an external DAC? Probably yes, but for now, I'm happy with the machine as it is. So all in all, both the CD and the mini disc player both work very well and sound very good. So <laughs> I'm very happy with my purchase. 50 pound well spent, boom. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.